what, what do you think the differences are between U.S. women's football, at least at the college level, in comparison to uh, your time within the Thai women's national team? And as you've experienced both of them, really? Um, it's hard to say. I don't want to be critical of anybody, but I honestly think that my time with the my university team, um, I played for Furman in South Carolina. I think that one thing that we have going for us in the U.S. is that it's very competitive. Um, and not to say that practices here aren't competitive or not, not, but I think the U.S. is a very much more physical style of play. Um, okay. And so I think I've kind of had to adjust myself here in Thailand where I think they're not quite as used to that. Mm. I mean, like I'll admit for, even for an American player, I'm pretty physical. Um, I haven't gotten any red cards. I actually got one last year, but in the US I never got a red card. <laughs> I'll give it, I got a yellow card a couple of times, but like I've never been a dirty player. It's just like, I tend to use my body. I'm not a fast player, but I kind of like try to take, to think faster than having to run faster. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I think developmentally wise, I think one of the big things I think is just there's more players. <laughs> there's a lot okay. more to choose from. And so it's a much more competitive environment in who's going to play the next day or who's going to make which team because the pool of players is that, that much bigger. Right, right. Interesting. Well, would you say that the the physical side, because having having lived in Thailand um, when I was younger, the I'd say Thai people aren't uh, characteristically known for being physical or having that kind of grit. It's it's more the giving the um, I, they, I I'm pretty sure Thailand has the nickname of being known as the the land of smiles so right they're very um, nice that's the problem yeah. they're so nice <laughs> the, 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 um so yeah i would say that one big difference between practices here practices there i think mm -hmm. is that we used to kick the crap out of each other to <laughs> be fair about it we'd beat each other up at practice and like you would not want to lose like you know it's the fight to the death basically but here it's like everyone's just so nice to each other and it's like oh it's okay like we'll get we'll get it next time kind of thing and i think it's a mentality that really needs to change mm. okay like it's, it's okay to be mean on the field and then off the field you can still be friends <laughs> yeah for sure for sure shalika how 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 does that um resonate with you if, if you feel it does uh alongside your indonesian teammates um, no, I do completely agree uh, with Nudi. Um, I think my experience in the UK in practice, everyone would like give it their all, you know, they would slide tackle their friend, they wouldn't care. And I played in the US as well. And I realized that in the US, it's way more physical than here in Indonesia. In Indonesia, I think people tend to use their skill more, like, try to like, bring the ball more and try to not hit other people because they're like, you know, this is practice. We don't want to injure anyone. That's the mentality. Right. But in the UK and the US, they're like every man for themselves. Sorry, every woman for themselves. And I think you can see that in games, you know. In games, yeah. um, they're very physical. Like people out there are very physical. Uh, but here in Asia, I think people tend to not be as physical. And I understand why, because out there like in the US uh, in the UK they're already blessed with like having really big posture and us Asians aren't as big as them so we try not to like collide with them so we have a different um playing style I guess yeah that's fair I mean I'm half Thai and I'm I'm not tall but I'm considered pretty big for a Thai girl right I guess I'm considered as being pretty big um I've grown since the last time we met. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I use, I'm used to playing with guys. And so th I think that's why I'm very physical. Like, I know for a fact that sometimes I get, like, on my friends' nerves because, like, they're just, 
chilling and they're like okay we're passing the ball and stuff and then I just come out of nowhere sliding tackle and I'm like I don't want to lose this might be a fun game but I'm not losing nope. but yeah very well <laughs> <laughs> so I hate losing I don't care where we are I might be playing with like 12 year olds for a fun game I would still not want to lose you can talk to my sister. She she stopped playing with me when we were about 10. She was like, I can't play anything with you anymore because you're just so competitive. <laughs> I hate my it. My brother <laughs> stopped playing with me because she was like, I can't do this with you. Come on, like, we're just playing and you're trying to nutmeg me again. I'm like, you need to right. stop. I'm like, I can't, you know? This is a part of the game. This is why I love it. The competition. Mm. Same thing. Nope, not leaving. <laughs> Yeah. Inherent competitive nature that both of you have. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um that's that's actually so funny. I I completely agree with that, especially <laughs> I coach uh within Leper University for volleyball team, um for the men's team. And even when I'm coaching and having played uh football and volleyball before, that competitive nature is just something that's unlike any other especially where I'd say I would say especially when it comes to sport but anything really as bad as that is to say um I don't know if you guys um follow the U.S. team the women's team sorry I cut you off um no, you follow them on Instagram but they had a video of like one of their camps where they were playing hungry hungry hippos and I forget who it was I think it was uh Becky Sauerbaum just like legit like rugby tackled somebody to stop them from taking like their soccer balls. <laughs> Wait, like a real and so, like, hungry hippos? Yeah, so they did like real life, but like instead of like having the hippos, like the players would like run and like take soccer balls from like each little, like from another team or whatever. <laughs> okay, I got you. And so you could like defend your, you could defend your grouping of balls, I guess, and they, by any means necessary. So she literally just like tackled the girl to the ground. <laughs> But like that's why they're so good. They're that competitive, even playing a game like Hungry Hungry Hippos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, uh, I'll, I'll look to bring us back in from from that detour. But um, with with that in mind, uh, that competitive spirit. What would you say are some key takeaways that um, maybe Asian women's football should learn from the U.S. Uh, women's structure? Uh, as well as maybe their style of play, which you think could uh, interconnect? Um, I think we're on the right track as of now. Um, there are more club teams and more universities, um, especially like in the league this year with our two divisions. There have there were a lot of teams that tried out for the league this year. We had like a playoff to decide who would be in what division and who would make the divisions or who would have to wait until next year. And the amount of teams that showed up this year was a lot more than we've seen before. And the style or the, the what do you call it? Sorry, I live in Thailand for so long, I've forgotten my English. Um, <laughs> I guess the level of play between some of the teams was like quite dramatic, I guess. So like, I think we beat a couple of teams like 13-0 or whatever, but then like we would lose to like another big team 5-0. So like there's still like a big, a lot of steps in between, but I think just getting the number of girls interested in soccer and showing that like it's not just a men's sport you don't have to be worried about being you know too boyish or too manly or whatever to play soccer like it can be like volleyball or you know track or any other sport like you can still be a girl and play soccer and just kind of like generate interest and show that like it's something that you can do um for anybody really um but then also the style of play that they have is, yes, they're physical, but they've never been a dirty team, the U.S. Um, they're competitive and they like to win and they'll tackle you. But at the same time, it's like they, uh, you see players and they know when is the time to dribble and when's the time to like kind of play, play faster. Um, I think that's something that we need to work on. I think, like Shalika said, um, Asian players tend to be more technical um, and like to keep the ball at our feet. But I think there's a time for dribbling and there's a time for you know we have to play the ball fast and one two touches and get the ball up as fast as possible and I think uh that may be something we're still trying to work on and kind of like developing our style of play and I don't think we have like a set style yet for our country okay so really really looking into the the pace of the game 
and mm -hmm. and how you develop that. What would who would who would you say in terms of uh, from from the both of you? Who are some teams that you think are really making strides, um, whether within the ASEAN nations or uh, some of other Asian countries uh, that are really um, developing uh, positively in that in that area of growth within their game. Uh, sorry, go first. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll go to I, Shilpa first. Me? Um, I mean, I personally think that um, the Philippines national team has improved a lot. Because um, the last time we uh, they played against Indonesia, it was a draw of 3-3. Three, three. And if I'm not mistaken, the last time in SEA Games, they actually went to the quarterfinals. So they have improved a lot. And I think they're on the right tracks. Like in Asia, Southeast Asia, I would say Philippines is doing really well. Okay. Agree. Um, and I'd say Vietnam is doing really well. Um, it used to be where Thailand, I think, was kind of ahead of Vietnam, but Vietnam, I don't know what they've done in the last couple of years, but wow, they're, they're, they're hard to play against. Um, and I think their style of play has definitely gotten better and they've kind of started to play that faster style of uh, soccer, I guess. Um, and so like when they play against us, like it's a tough game. <laughs> I mean, it's always been competitive, but I think if they keep up what they're doing, they're going to be hard to beat in the next couple of years. And I think they made it to the semifinal, the Olympic qualifiers um, this year and ended yeah. up losing to Australia or South Korea. I forget who they lost to. Sorry. Um, but yeah, they did really well this year. And so I think if they keep up what they're doing, and I think they got a new head coach as well. Um, I think he's really changing how, how they're developing and how they're going to be in team to look at in the near future all right what would, what would you say are are the reasons that make them such challenging teams to face they're very disciplined uh, i have to say um they're very fit they're really good defensively or whatever but when they have a counter attack which i think i hate to say it but as like Asian, like a smaller Asian country or ASEAN country, like I think you kind of have to like accept the fact that you have to play more defensively, but they're a very good mm -hmm. compact team out of the back. But then like they have a very fast counterattack and they know what they want to do and they have a very direct style of play. They don't keep the ball very long. Like even if you're playing against a more physical European team, like it's going to be harder to get the ball from them if they don't have the ball at their feet, if it's already moving on to the next player. 